Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 9th February 2020. I am Sagan Nandi. I used to work in information technology, mostly in Singapore. Now I have retired and I am living in Thailand, swing trading stocks. I use the Q trading systems and techniques. You may watch this and other videos on my YouTube channel Trading Profitably. This is my email ID tradingprofitably at gmail.com. I regularly share stock and market analysis on my traders forum sagannandi.com and also on my Twitter page twitter.com sagannandi. All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Let me go through the disclaimer first. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. After that, I will demonstrate the use of the 360 degrees analysis where you can find truly high probability low risk trades by aligning forces from the market level, sector industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I start with the oil ETF USO. I am analyzing it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this single template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart Price is going down for 5 weeks now. The backdrop candle color and shape both are bearish. The relative performance line is tilting down showing it is hugely underperforming the market. In the daily chart price came down in almost a straight line. If you followed my earlier market roundup videos you know that at this point I suggested looking for a short setup. Is there a short setup now? Not using my technique because it is already oversold. It is near a watermark support level. If price could go up from here, then you could look for a buying opportunity. However, you may not buy US oil unless this memory resistance line is broken. Right now there is no swing trade setup in USO. Gold ETF GLD Gold came down little bit this week. However, the candle shape is bullish. The candle color, backdrop candle color, changed from bullish one week ago, that was cyan, and this week it is neutral. In the daily chart, it is moving in a range. It is bound by memory support at the bottom and watermark resistance at the top. When price moves in a sideways range, the Optimum trading opportunities are usually at the two edges, the upper edge or the lower edge. 
now it is in the middle of the range there is no swing trade opportunity now you may watch to see if price can go to the upper edge and reverses down or go to the lower edge and reverses up and accordingly take your next swing trade the other possibility is a breakout from the range in either direction if that breakout happens you may not get a low risk entry opportunity at the point of the breakout instead you may wait for price to make a higher low like in this case or a lower high as in this case and then take your next trade now i begin with the market etfs analysis the aim is to decide if the market is looking bullish or bearish if it is bullish then i am going to look for stock long trades only if it is bearish i am going to look for stock short trades only and if it is neutral or indecisive you may consider taking either long or short trade whatever be the direction you are trading you may want to align forces from all the levels market sector industry fundamental as well as technical levels that will give you higher probability and lower risk trades i begin with the s&p 500 etf spy one week ago the weekly candle color and shape both were bearish and in the daily we had a magenta flow color candle with lower high and lower low that confirmed a go with flow short trade setup on friday one week ago what happened to that trade that trade got stopped out this week on monday we had a inside candle and on tuesday price opened with a gap up and our stop on the short trade go with flow short trade that could be taken on friday one week ago would be stopped out on tuesday this week after that price went up on thursday spy made a new all time high the candle shape was indecisive and on friday price came down closed just below the watermark resistance level thereby creating a false upside breakout if price continues to go down from here then you may look for a short trade however this is not the weakest of the four market etfs if you are going to take a short trade you may take the short trade in the weakest of the four market etfs which one is weakest we'll find that out soon this is my public traders forum sagarnandi.com and i regularly share stock and market analysis for the usa market and india market let's look at a post that i shared recently i shared this post why i protected my longs and took some bearish positions today i shared it on february 5th four days ago and i looked at qqq why did i say that i am becoming cautious now that was based on the fact that the market qqq in this case is at all time high and it is at price extreme or pendulum high as you can see from the band indicator and while it is at that very high price level there were extreme bearish pressure followed by extreme bearish pressure followed by extreme bullish pressure 
after a few days again extreme bearish pressure followed by extreme bullish and then again extreme bullish pressure this is showing indecision at the very high price level though the market is in an uptrend when i see indecision at a very high price level i am cautious about my long positions therefore i applied protective stop on some of the long positions and booked profit in some others i also took some short trades and the short trades were in weak stocks technically weak as well as fundamentally weak stocks i'll explain at least one such stock in today's session later this was what i shared about qqq on wednesday let's look at qqq as of friday's close nasdaq etf qqq this is the strongest of the four market etfs shown by the relative performance steadily going up this week's candle color is bullish the shape is also very bullish which flipped from bearish color and bearish shape one week ago in the daily price is in an uptrend supported by multiple memory support lines on thursday and friday price didn't change much from wednesday's close it is at the upper boundary level to extend it for me to take any new long trade and it is very bullish therefore there is no short opportunity right now Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA here also the weekly backdrop color flipped from bearish to bullish however this week's candle has an upper tail price tried to go above the watermark resistance but reverse from there this is weaker than S&P 500 shown by the relative performance line tilting down in the daily price made a new all time high on thursday and on friday it closed below thursday's close and also below thursday's low that created a false upside breakout if price continues to go down from here then you may look for a short trade there is no swing short trade setup using the daily interval if price continues to go down you may look for a short using the intraday time frame however dia is not the weakest of the four market etfs it is weaker than qqq weaker than spy but it is stronger than iwm If you are going to short the market you may short it using the weakest of the four ETFs that is IWM let's study IWM now Russell 2000 ETF IWM this is different from the other three market ETFs in several ways here the weekly backdrop color is magenta this is the only ETF where the backdrop color is magenta the daily flow color is magenta traffic light color is red this is the only market ETF where the daily and weekly both colors are bearish this is the weakest of the four ETFs also shown by the relative performance line tilting downward if price continues to go down you may use this ETF to short the market and you may take the short trade using intraday time frame in fact on thursday looking at the relative weakness of IWM and a gap up open followed by price move downward that is a gap short day trade opportunity that came on thursday looking at that i entered a bearish trade 
in IWM on Thursday itself. I didn't use the ETF as such. I used long put vertical and combined that with short call vertical. I opened that trade on Thursday and on Friday price came down. I have some profit in the trade, not very large profit but some profit. If price continues to go down, I will try to book profit at or near the memory support line. And if price reverses from here, continues to go up, I have some profit. I will not let the trade turn into a losing trade. I mentioned that I took a short trade, bearish trade in IWM on Thursday using gap short day trade setup. Where can you find more information about these setups? You can find them from learn to trade category. I have put together several books with a lot of illustrative charts to explain all the trade setups that I use both for swing trading and also for gap trading. Let me also explain the exact entry using intraday chart. This is IWM and this time I am looking at it using intraday 10 minute chart. On Thursday, price opened at this point, the blue pivot level. That was a gap up open because it opened above the previous day's high, which is the green pivot level. It had a gap up open. After that, it fell down and came below early range low. The early range high and early range low lines are dynamically drawn based on price move. Because it opened with a gap up and then went below early range low, that gave a gap short day trade opportunity. The stop was just above early range high. After that price didn't go up much, didn't go down much also, price closed at this point. If I took it only as a day trade, I could close the trade with probably small profit. However, I wanted to hold the trade. That is why I used not ETF but options, long put verticals combined with short call verticals to open the trade. I held on to the trade overnight. Next day, price opened with a gap down. Friday's open was at this point which was below Thursday's low. It opened with a gap down and then it went below early range low. Again it gave a gap short day trade opportunity. If you didn't take the gap short day trade on Thursday you could try to take it on Friday also. However, I was already in the bearish state from Thursday onward, as price continued to move down on Friday, I remained in the trade. As of Friday, I have probably between 15 to 10 percent of maximum possible profit in the trade. As I explained, if price continues to go down, I will try to book profit at the daily memory support line. And if it goes up, I will not let the trade turn into a losing trade. I will exit with small profit or at break even. Usually at this point I start to conclude whether the market is looking bullish or bearish or indecisive to me. However, this week let me dig a little bit deeper. I shared this tweet on Friday. I shared it at 12.20 p.m. EST and I looked at the market breadth. This is what I shared. This is where Q 
QQQ open on Friday and SPY open at this point. Both of them open below Thursday's close. After that, QQQ went up and it turned positive when I shared the tweet. So QQQ turned positive. I saw that NASDAQ advanced decline. The market breadth indicator opened lower and stayed low, close to the minus 1000 level. And NASDAQ up down volume also steadily went down, recovered somewhat, still reasonably below the zero level. What about SPY? SPY opened lower, could not turn positive, and the NYSE advanced decline opened lower, stayed down. The up down volume for NYSE was worse, it was steadily going down. This showed that the recovery in QQQ on Friday was led by some very large stocks, not by broad market strength. That is a reason for concern. This is what I shared around midday, 12.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. How did the market break in Friday? Let's look at the live charts. This is market breadth as of Friday's close. I shared the tweet around this point. After that, QQQ fell down, SPY also fell down. NASDAQ advanced decline remained low, NYSE advanced decline remained low, and the up down volumes fell very sharply. This market breadth is showing that on Friday there was considerable selling in the market. Though that may not be apparent from the market ETF study, market internals are showing that there was heavy selling. Lately, price is going up. However, there were several other days also where the market breadth was very weak. That coupled with the fact that market is at a very high level and it is showing indecision in terms of alternate days of extreme bullish pressure and extreme bearish pressure is leading me to express caution. If we look at the market ETFs, market is bullish. However, if we look at the market bread, it is leading me to be cautious. What about the sector analysis? Is it giving us similar information or different insight? This is my one month sector performance study. This week, 10 sectors went up and one went down. That is a vast improvement from one week ago when all the sectors were down. This week, all sectors except energy went up and some went up by significant percentages like communication services, healthcare, materials, financials. Over the weekly period, the sector performance is very bullish. This is in line with what we saw from the daily and weekly market ETF charts. What about sector performance on Friday? Here I am using the real-time sector industry rotation analysis tool. Over five-day period, as I showed just now, 10 sectors went up, only energy went down. However, on Friday, shown by the zero-day statistics, all the sectors went down, none went up. This is in sync with what 
we saw from market rate that there was heavy selling. This is also giving rise to caution. Friday there was heavy selling and all the sectors went down. Finally then, what is my market outlook this week? My market outlook is a mixture of bullishness and bearishness. When I look at the weekly daily at a glance charts for the market ETFs, they are generally bullish. However, when I look at the market internals, especially on Friday, there was heavy selling. Sector strength is bullish over 5-day period. However, on Friday, sectors were very weak. That is leading me to conclude that the market is neutral or you can say indecisive. It's neither bullish nor bearish. What kind of trades may I look for? I may look for both bullish or bearish trades. The other possibility is that avoid taking any trades. I did find some suitable long as well as short trades and I shared them on my traders forum and also on the Twitter page. Let me review some of those trades that I shared during the week. This is a tweet that I shared explaining how you could book profit in a short trade in GEOS. The short trade entry was at this point when you had the magenta flow color candle. That was a short trade using go with flow short trade setup. Price was going down with lower high and lower low and then you had a magenta flow color candle that was a go with flow short trade setup. Your stop would be just above the recent high and you could book profit at the next support level. Right after entry, price dropped heavily. You could book profit at the watermark support level. By that time, already more than risk distance was covered by the reward. Alternatively, you could book profit at the memory support level on this Thursday. If you didn't book profit on Thursday, in this tweet, I explained that on Friday, when you saw price was bouncing up from the memory support, you would book profit. This was a 360 degrees short trade setup at this point. Why 360 degrees short trade setup? Because the stock was fundamentally weak and the industry was also weak. How do I know that? I know that from the peer analysis at industry rotation analysis. The peer analysis tool shows that the stock was overvalued. This is based on fundamental calculation. And if you looked at its industry, oil and gas equipment and services, the industry was very weak also. So you could take a confident short trade following the 360 degrees approach where you found a technical short trade setup trend following go with flow short trade setup while the stock was fundamentally weak and the industry was weak as well and you could book profit in the trade right at the point price was starting to bounce up from the memory support line this is what i shared during the day on friday let's see how geos ended friday This is GEOS. You can see that from the memory support, it bounced up significantly. It went up more since the time I tweeted it. It also has displayed the bullish headwind possible reversal signal. There is no headwind long trade setup because there is a memory resistance right above the closing price on Friday and also the weekly is not matching the requirement for a headwind long trade setup. However, the headwind signal has come that tells us to book or protect profit in existing short position. 
the bullish headwind coupled with the price bouncing up from the memory support line led me to book full profit in the short position in GEOS. Now I am going to analyze two more stocks that I shared on my forum and Twitter page explaining how I entered and managed the trades. One was on GKOS. Let me explain the trade using the live charts. This is GKOS using at a glance template, the weekly daily template. In the weekly chart, after a very sharp up move, it didn't go anywhere for a long time. Went up, came down, went up, came down, then came down again. In recent weeks, I noticed that the backdrop color turned bullish at this point and the candle shape was also very bullish after the drop preceding that. Then price tried to go down, however, the backdrop candle color remained bullish and then price was going up again. In the weekly, it formed a W pattern. One way to take a trade in a stock that is forming a W pattern is when it breaks out of the memory resistance and for that entry you may use the daily chart in the daily chart the memory resistance was at this point you could probably try to take a trade on this day but i didn't do that i took the trade on this day when it broke out of the memory resistance line that would be the right approach in the Twitter, I mistakenly marked this day as the entry day. I took the long trade on this day using the breakout long trade setup. The weekly backdrop color was bullish and in the daily it was breaking above the memory resistance line. Since then price has gone up. On Friday, it regained the white direction line and the weekly ended with a very bullish shape, bullish color candle. Some people like to enter a long position when it goes above the white direction line. In this case, I could enter at least partial position ahead of time using the breakout setup and I could add to the position on Friday. In the weekly chart it is looking pretty bullish forming a very nice w pattern and strongly going up this is a technical trade setup another technical trade setup that i shared in the traders forum that was on this stock that went up by seven plus percentage on friday while the market failed to go up the stock was TWOU. This is how the weekly chart was looking. It had a sharp drop. Then a bullish headwind appeared in the weekly chart. Since then price couldn't go down more. Tried to go up, came down little bit, but couldn't hit the low created by the bullish headwind signal. And on Friday, it was breaking out of the memory resistance line with a backdrop color that was bullish and the shape was also bullish. Looking at the weekly chart, it looked like giving kind of W pattern again. It's a possible technical long trade setup with long entered at the close of Friday. We can look at live charts to see how it closed Friday. Let's look at TWOU. -E 
the weekly ended with a bullish shape and bullish color in the daily it broke out of this memory resistance in fact broke out of two memory resistance lines on friday interestingly it displayed a bullish headwind in the daily also since then price is going up you could take an early position at this point itself if you were running the scans regularly tw or you would appear in the bullish headwind scan on this day you could take a partial position probably at that time itself if not you could take a long position on friday this is also a technical trade setup is there any short trade setup there is let me show a possible short trade setup i am using trade station q elite for that the stock is ddd 3d systems what kind of possible setup is here ddd has displayed the bearish headwind possible reversal signal at the very top in the daily chart it tried to go above the watermark resistance but reversed creating a false upside breakout and it broke below this memory support line giving a breakout setup at the same time the weekly candle shape is bearish the color is neutral that is matching the requirements of the bearish headwind trade setup as well as the breakout trade setup only concern you may have is that the friday's closing price is significant distance away from the recent high giving a sizable risk in the trade looking at that instead of entering the trade on friday using daily chart you may keep an eye on this stock ddd next week and try to enter a trade using the real time intraday fine tune chart template which will give you a low risk entry point that is the technical analysis of ddd how is the stocks fundamentals and industry let's look it up using the peer analysis tool to do the fundamental analysis of ddd when i type the symbol it retrieves some basic information about the stock now it is retrieving its peers it has finished retrieving the peers and if it gives an unexpected error that is an error coming from metastock zenith that is definitive icon i am pausing and replaying it to do the calculation again based on freshly retrieved data now it is updating the statistics you can see that this is an overvalued stock as per our scorecard and it also has negative earnings growth in the latest quarter and negative earnings growth in last three yearly periods as well this is looking fundamentally weak both in terms of valuation as well as earnings growth what about its industry let me look at the industry and instantly you can see the industry is also weak it was stronger earlier cyan color and in recent periods it has turned weaker it is also displaying deceleration shown by the base columns therefore you have found a stock ddd that is giving a possible technical short trade setup in fact two short trade setups very shadow and short trade setup as well as possible breakout short trade setup fundamentally the stock is overvalued as well as having negative earnings growth and the industry is weak as well this is what i call 360 degrees shorting opportunity where all the forces from sector industry fundamental and technical are aligned to the bearish side time for a quick summary 
the market ETF study is showing when I use the weekly daily interval that the market is overall bullish. There is not enough reason to take short trades. However, when I look at the market internals using market breadth analysis of NASDAQ and NYSE, I see heavy selling that was present on Friday and that was present a few days earlier also. So the market was going up in terms of ETFs movement. Internally, there was heavy selling that is giving rise to caution. Sector analysis is showing weekly is bullish. Our Friday again was weak. In this market, one approach is to stand aside until there is harmony between the ETFs movement and the sector movement and the market breadth or take both long as well as short trades. When taking the long trades, you will like to take them in strong fundamental stocks where the industry is strong and technical buy setup is there and for short trades you will like to take them in weak industries in weak fundamental stocks that are giving technical short trade setup. I explained several such trades how you could enter them sometimes using the daily time frame and sometimes if you want to you can also use the intraday time frame to precisely enter the trade. As these examples illustrate whatever be the market condition you can probably always find trades that are low risk as well as high probability. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.